Father, in the precious name of your dear Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus, we thank you for just allowing us to be back in your house of prayer one more time to just to lift up holy hands unto you, Lord Jesus Christ. Lord God, as we open up our hearts, Lord God, and our voices, Lord Jesus Christ, Father God, that you can hear, Lord God, Jesus, from the throne of heaven, Lord God. Lord God, that thy praise and thy worshiping, Lord God, Jesus, will be as a sweet, savor spell, Lord God, well acceptable unto thee. Lord God, and as we, Lord God, come together, Lord God, with our heart open and our cup upright, Lord Jesus, at the man of God that he spoke this morning, Lord God, that you allow him to speak again, Lord God. Lord God, that that word will go to Christ's name, we pray.
sing a song maybe here. I didn't sing this morning, but uh, I, I don't know what key I sing in. I'm singing the key that I land in. That's what we do. You can have your seat, man. You may be down and feel like God somehow forgotten that you are faced with circumstances you can't get through and right now it seems there's no way out you're going under god's proven time and time again he'll take care of you and you'll do Second Thessalonians chapter 3. We want to greet you for my wife once again. She says hi to you all. And, and so we just, I miss her. I miss her being with me. She's, she's part of me, you know. Just, just miss her. Amen. But Lord knows all things. Amen. 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 Verse 1. Finally, brethren, pray for us. That the word of the Lord may have free course and be glorified, even as it is with you. And that we may be delivered from the unreasonable and wicked men, for all men have not faith. But the Lord is faithful, who shall establish you and keep you from evil. Aren't you thankful for that? Amen. And we have confidence in the Lord touching you, that you both do and will do the things which we have commanded you. And the Lord direct your hearts into the love of God, into the patiently, patient waiting for Christ. Now we command you, brethren, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, that you withdraw yourself from every brother that walketh disorderly and not after the tradition which he received of us. For yourself know 
how ye ought to follow us, for we behave not ourselves disorderly among you. Neither do we eat any man's bread for naught, for wrought with labor and travail night and day, that we may not be chargeable to any of you. Not because we have not power to make ourselves an example unto you to follow us. For even when we were with you, this we command you, that if any would not work, neither should he eat. For we hear that there are some which walk among you disorderly, working not at all, but are busybodies. Now then that are such, we command and exhort by our Lord Jesus Christ, that with quietness they work and eat their own bread. But ye, brethren, be not weary in well-doing. If any man obey not our word by this epistle, note this man, have not company with them, that he may be ashamed. You count him not as an enemy, but admonish him as a brother. That the Lord of peace himself give you peace always, by all means. The Lord be with you all. The salutation of Paul with mine own hand, which is a token in every epistle. So I write, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Just want to take a text, if I might, by the help of the Lord. In the fourth verse there, or the, not the fourth verse, in the fifth verse, waiting patiently. Waiting patiently. Let's bow our hearts to Him. If you have a need upon your heart, just lift it up to the Lord. Ask the Lord to meet your need. We believe He still has discernment of the thoughts and tents of the heart. He knows exactly what to say. And He's always right on time. Let's invite Him to come now. Father, Lord, we just count it a blessing and honor, Lord, to stand, Lord God, at our post of duty once more. Father, we just ask You to come in a mighty way this evening, Father. Lord, take the lips of clay. Lord, move me out of the way once again, Lord, that You might speak to Your people, Lord. Bring encouragement, Lord God, whatever the need is, Father, I pray that you just bless them just now, Lord. Lord, as I surrender myself to you, Father, Lord, we just enter into an atmosphere, Lord. Father, we just ask you, Lord, let the word have take effect in our lives, Father. We open our hearts, Lord, looking for you to move, Father. We love you and appreciate you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen and amen. You may have your seats this evening. Verse 3 there. You know, uh, as we think on these things, you know, waiting patiently. I'm sure that's what a lot of us do when we wait. Amen. We live in what's called the, I think it's the push button society. Yes. If we can't push a button, we don't like to wait. Uh, how do you know that? Push Safari and see if Safari turns on quick enough. You hit the button on the, on the uh, dishwasher, you expect it to go. Yeah. If it doesn't go, it's like, by the way, you still got dishwashers. I know, who said that? That's his dishwasher's, not mine. <laughs> well, praise the Lord. But we don't like to wait patiently. This is a society, believe me, I just drove up here. People don't like to wait for anything. They're going to get there, and then they're going to get there now. It doesn't matter if they take your life into their hands, or if they take your life and kill you, they're going to get there. Amen? If we live in this society where everything is go, 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 go. And you know, we live in that society, but sometimes that transitions into our spiritual life. Right. Come on now. That's if we have to wait on anything, well, forget it. I don't want it anyway. I'm going to go get something else. Right. Come on, we do this. I've never understood people getting mad at a, uh, at a drive-thru, though. Mm -hmm. You ever understood why somebody would yell at somebody through a drive-thru? Mm -hmm. You can't see them. And you still got to go get your food. I've never understood that. You know, but we live in this society... And it comes to our spiritual life a lot of times Amen. that we don't wait on God like we should. Come on, right. And we begin to get out of line because we aren't waiting patiently. Amen. We'll wait, but it's like this. Mm. I know I'm talking to somebody. Because I'm talking to myself. Because I'm, I'm the I don't like, we don't have much patience, but let me tell you, one of the fruits of the spirits, spirit is patient. Yes. Right. Patient. Amen. Being patient. Right. Come on now. Well, I preached this one time. It's been a while back. And the Lord laid this on my heart. And I preached it. And we went to lunch. And we waited an hour before we sat. Oh, my goodness. And the pastor was like, I'm not saying a word. <laughs> Lord has a sense of humor, doesn't he? But we need to have patience yeah. with God. That's right. When we make a prayer request, just know this. It moves heaven. Amen. It moves heaven. You might have to wait 21 days. You might have to wait two years. But God heard your first prayer. That's right. But the problem is when we don't get what we want at our first prayer, we're done. Our faith goes away. We, we begin to doubt things. We think everything's wrong. No. 
That is a lie that has come incorporated with this generation and how everything is fast, 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 move, move, move. But remember who you are and remember who he is. He is God and you're subject to him. Amen. It isn't just do this now, do this now, and then God doesn't do it, forget Preach, now, now I know preach, this is preach. down to earth. This is where we live. Right. Amen. And we come to this place with God. But remember, He is God. Wait patiently on yes. Him. He knows what He's doing. Yes. We know our request. Yes. And you have not because you ask not. Right? right. Amen. Yes. But when we ask, wait patiently yes. for Him to answer. Yes. Right. Yes. Now wait for an answer. Mm-hmm. Wait for an answer. A lot of times we pray. And we're like, we've already got our mind uh, made up what we're going to do. Well, I, 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 I was supposed to pray about this. All right, I prayed. And away we go. But we don't wait Come on. and ask a question. You must wait on an answer. Right. Amen. How many wants to be in the will of God? Amen. Well, sometimes it takes for us to patiently wait. Amen. This is how we patiently wait. Amen. Get your oil changed. Done yet, man. It's just drain it out. Put it in. Put the filter on. Come on! I could have done this by now. I came to you because you're jiffy. Last and holy. You all know I'm preaching down here, man. But we tend to transition this, and this is what I want you to get out of. Go ahead. The church of the living God needs to be waiting patiently for God. That's He's right. coming back. Yeah, amen. Yes, sir. You know, people yes. begin to lose hope because they forget and wait patiently. Right. And we should be the ones that's waiting at the Amen. door. There was one there in the Gospels that's waiting at the door. They were waiting for that knock. Right. They knew he was coming. There's not a shadow of doubt. Listen, there's not a shadow of doubt that we can wait patiently. If God said it, it's going to come Amen. to pass. Amen. When will it come to pass? In his time. Amen. Amen. Because the Bible says he makes all things beautiful yeah. in his time. Yeah. I just want to be in his time. Amen. Amen. I want to be in my position yes. in his time. Yes. Hallelujah! I don't like missing service. You know, I don't know about you. When, 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 when you miss service, you think they're going to have an awesome service, and I'm going to miss it. Don't mind. Great, brother. Amen. Go ahead. Shouldn't that be the expectation when we walk through the doors of the church? They're going to have an awesome service, and I'm going to hear about it, and I'm going to miss it. I don't know about you, but I don't want to miss it. Come on. I don't want to miss it. Amen. Listen, He is faithful. That's how you can patiently wait. You know He is faithful. This God has not failed yet and He cannot lie. He has two of you. He cannot fail. He cannot fail. We have a hard time believing that because everybody we know fails. Come on now. Your mom's failed. Your dad's failed. You've made mistakes. Your friends have made mistakes. But we're serving a God that what He says He is going to do. If he said he'd heal you, he'll heal you. Amen. Yes. But you have to believe it's already done. Listen, it's already done. Yes. Your healing is already done. Yes. Right. Your yes. salvation is already paid for. Yes. Yes. Your token is already there. Yes. You've got to accept it and believe it and take it and go. And let the life of Jesus. Now, if you see things in your life, we talked about this morning, you know things in your life are wrong. Yes. And you pray about it. And if it isn't automatic... We live in that age of automatic. If it isn't automatic, then we're... Okay. Well, I guess it ain't going to be that way. I'll live this way, and you immediately begin to doubt. That's not how we should be as Christians. We should be waiting patiently for what we've asked for. Now, when you pray, you get into the Spirit. When you get in the Spirit, you're not selfish. Amen. Well, glory. Amen. You're not asking things amiss then. No. Right. Listen, I, I walked into my parents. My mother-in-law and father-in-law live with us. They're both 81. My father-in-law streams messages all the time. He listens to Brother Barry Coffey, Jason Watkins, Donnie Reagan, I mean, Tim Pruitt, Ron Peterson. I mean, he just, all day long, that's what he does. He's 81, doesn't have much to do, and he enjoys doing that. So you walk in there, and a lot of times there's somebody preaching. So I end up being quiet and listen for a minute. I was listening to Brother Barry Coffey. And he was talking on Thanksgiving. He said, you know, when you go to pray, he said, you should have more things to praise God for and give him thanks for this. God, I need this. God, wait a minute. Look at what God has done for you. We lose sight of that so much of where he's brought us from. 
the deliverance he's given us. He's yeah. taking things out of our lives. Amen. Yeah, but then you begin to praise God. You begin to worship God. Yeah. You begin to yeah. thank God. Amen. Yeah. You want to talk about a different prayer then. Yeah. You begin to get into the press of God. Yeah. And then when you break through into that, yeah. then you begin to ask God for the things that you have need of. Right. And it's not right. demanding God. It's asking God. Yeah. Yeah. And when you get in that spirit, your thing, listen, what happens? Your requests begin to change. All right. Amen. How do you know that, Brother Matt? What did Isaiah do when he got in the presence of God? He said, whoa, whoa, is me. Oh, yes. my. Amen. I thought I was somebody. This was a prophet. And he said, I'm a man yes. right. of unclean lips. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. You get into that presence. Uh -huh. And you begin to ask God. And you know you've touched the throne of That's God. Right. Amen. How many yes. knows what I'm talking about? You know you've touched the throne of God. Yes. When you leave that prayer closet, you can rest assured the answer's on the way. Yes. I don't care if you pray for that loved one time and time again. If you have touched the throne of God, Amen. that answer is on the way. Yes. That salvation, that need is yes. on the way. Yes. Yes. You may never see it take effect. How many have ever prayed for somebody and it seems like they get worse and worse and worse? Yes. You know what that is? Your prayer is actually getting answered. Amen. Come on, right? Yes, Why? Because sometimes they got to hit rock bottom before they get up. All right. Yes, sir. Right. And you know what? They're actually fighting. They're fighting the word of God coming into their life. Yeah. When I talked about it, how many's ever laid down? Listen, when I was talking about laying down at night, knowing I was doing wrong, I was talking about me. Amen. I grew up this message. I grew up and I went out there. I am not happy about any of that. Right. But I know what it's like to lay down at night and think, Lord, what in the world am I doing? Yeah. That's right. I know I'm wrong. What am I doing? Yes. But I came to a place of surrender. Yeah. And you know what that was? That was people. That was brothers. That was sisters. That was my mom and daddy. They were praying for me. Yeah. They were praying for me. So don't ever think that your prayers are not being heard. That's right. It doesn't give an account of Daniel thinking he prayed for 21 days and waited that whole time. He didn't worry about it. He kept right on praying. Listen, you keep right on praying. You pray through that doubt that tries to come on to you. That God said that prayer isn't going to be answered. I say to you, Satan, you're a liar. Doubt, you're a liar. If I prayed it, I believe it. His word will not lie. This is about time. We take the Bible for what it is. It is the truth. It is the absolute. It is real. It's more real than you are. Hallelujah. It's more real. This Bible is more real. It's more real than what you see. Yes, sir. Listen, I believe there's an unseen world right here with us. I'm sorry. You just think I'm crazy. No, it's because the Bible says yeah, so. Right. Yeah. He says there's angels encamped about us. There's a spiritual warfare going on. Right. If when Daniel prayed and there was war going on, yeah. listen, you're, you're causing battles. Right. Hallelujah. Yeah. But God said he'd bankrupt heaven. Yeah. Yeah. And let one of his words come yeah. down. Yeah. So listen, so when one of these children, think about it. Listen, yeah. you ones that got parents that are parents. One of your kids asks you for something. What does it do to you, mom and daddy, when you know they really need it? They're not just asking to ask, but you know they really need it. What does it do? You'll do anything in your power to help them. Yeah. Now think about a God that has all power. Yeah. All right. Three. Think about a God that has all power. Amen. Amen. Wait patiently. Amen. Hallelujah. Just want to build your faith today. Just want your faith to realize, listen, have faith. Have some muscles on it. Right. You know, in order to have muscles, you got to do some work. Right. Yeah. Amen. I know they want to pop a needle in there. And, but even those guys that pop needles, if they don't work out, it just turns to flab. Yeah. yeah. Come on now. Amen. But it's about time we get some muscles on our faith. Right. Some faith to wait patiently. No, no, I prayed about that. God's going to take care of that. How's he going to do it? What's he going to do? I don't know. But he, I put it in his hands. I commit it to him. I'm not going to worry about it any longer. Amen. And listen, you have to fight that because you're human. Yes, yes sir. Yes. These humans, we, we fret, we worry. Right. Amen. Well, come right. on, once again, yes. you guys give me your halos with me because I want to be. Preach. Come on now. Yeah. You're a human being. Oh, yeah. You have faults. Yeah. You have failures. Preach. I have faults. I have failures. Yes, sir. But I also know a big God that's bigger than my faults yes. and my failures. Oh, and the yeah. Bible tells yeah. me if I confess those, He will cleanse me yes. of all. A L L. Unrighteousness. Yes, sir. That's right. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. You love him. He's faithful. Yes, sir. He is a faithful God. He is a good, good father. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. I know as a father I failed. Yeah. 
Yes. Yeah. I failed. Yeah. 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 Come on now. As a father, I have failed. Yes. But he has not. Right. And he's not going to. No. <laughs> Listen, I had a report here recently. I'll just tell you a good report. My son, this, this blessed my heart. I'll tell you, it's blessed my heart. He went away to Virginia. They had a, a boys camp. They have this camp for the brotherhood. These young men, that they met at a whole bunch of camps. There's one brother that put it together. And they kind of, they come up here. I don't know, somewhere in West Virginia they went to. But it's kind of just a whole bunch of boys being boys. And letting them be boys and have fun. And I, I'm okay with that. They, they have a few messages. They sing a few songs. And, but it, it's young men getting together and getting encouraged for one another. Well, it's, it's a whole bunch of young men, and they, they need fed. So they have sisters going, they cook food. Well, I got a report. A brother texted me like three days after. He says, I just want to let you know, you got a good boy. He said, that young man went to the kitchen, and he helped do dishes every night without anybody asking him. Nobody asked him to. He's a good dad. You've been a good dad. Oh, Lord. I failed so much. Yeah, yeah. It's prayers. Yeah. And it's your prayer. And it's swell. I'm talking, you're talking about something that swells within your heart. And I thought, Lord, what about when I do good? Listen, I didn't see him do it. Amen. And I thought about that Holy Ghost going back. Yeah. And he's right on time. Mm -hmm. He's living for others. Yes. He does it of his own heart. Amen. He does it of his own accord. Right. Wants to hear that. Amen. I want him to have a good report of me. Yes. Yes. I want to, no matter what people think about, yes. nobody saw him do it. Right. But people saw him do it. Yes. Hallelujah! Yes. They reported back to his daddy. Yeah. Yes. And his daddy was excited. Oh, I'll be honest with you, I didn't yes. tell him. Yes. And then I preached about a good report. And about the end of the service, I, I said, Now I'm going to give a good report. Amen. He didn't have a clue. His mama didn't have a clue. We were both all crying. <laughs> It's the grace of God. Amen. Yes, but I want my father to smile at me. Amen. Listen, what does it say here? It says, the Lord is faithful. Who shall establish you? Now, to establish you is to make stable. Come on now. In order to be stable, you have to wait patiently. Amen. Wait patiently. Place firmly. To, to establish, to strengthen. To render constant. Sometimes it's hard to be constant, isn't it? Sometimes in the middle of the fire, in the middle of the, of the trial, it's hard to wait patiently because, Lord, I cannot handle anymore. Right. But then the scripture comes and it says, Lord, you said you wouldn't put more on me than I can handle. Amen. So evidently, Lord, I can handle Amen. more than I think I can handle. Amen. I'm here to tell you, you can handle everything Amen. this world is throwing at you. Amen. Amen. You've Amen. got the power of the Holy Ghost yes. if you unleash that power. Yes. Amen. It's God's power, but He's wanting to use you Amen. as the vessel. Amen. Amen. That's right. Probably. Praise the Lord. It said right here, and keep you from evil. I'm reminded of Jude chapter 1, verse 24. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling. Yes. Right. Aren't you glad you know him? Amen. Amen. And to present you faultless. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Amen. He will. How? By the blood. That's right. By the blood, the perfecting Amen. blood of Jesus Christ. Yes, Lord. Amen. Let me read on. And we have confidence in the Lord touching you. Verse 4. That you both do and will the things which God command, which we command you. And the Lord direct your hearts into the love of God. This is where we need more of the love of God. Yes. Amen. Saints, if we just fall in love yes. with him all over again. Yes. Amen. Love is such a powerful thing. Love conquers all. Amen. Love casts out spirits. Love yes. conquers all. Yes. This is where we want to get though. And to the patient waiting of Christ. Now listen. I'm going to read you another scripture. This is in Psalms. Verse 37 and 7. It says, rest in the Lord. Rest in the Lord. When you're waiting, you can rest. Rest assured that what he said he'd do, he'll do. You said, Brother Matt, but, but I need it now. No, hold on. God knows what you need. Amen. He said he'd take care of you, did he not? Yes. He said he wouldn't leave you comfortless, did he not? Yes. He said he'd feed you, did he not? Yes. Amen. He knows what you need. Yes. The problem is we think we need, and it's because we've been influenced by this world. We need it right now. Yes. 
Lord, I need a refill of the Holy Ghost right now. Lord, it's my give it to me right now. Make me feel better, Lord. Come on. We do this to God. But yet we are willing to sacrifice more of us. Well, Lord, we just want to feel better. It is, listen, this, this religion, this, this, this Bible is not all about feeling better. It's about Christ in you, the yeah. hope of glory. Yeah, yeah. It's about God being made manifest in you. Hey, yes, man. Yes. Let's go to 2 Samuel chapter 5. The Holy now as we read in Psalms there, David would say, rest in the Lord and wait patiently for Him. Wait patiently. Oh my, I know, I know this isn't a popular subject, but it's just after the truth. You know, sometimes, sometimes our faith begins to, to dwindle as we wait because it's been so long. The Bible would talk about that. He said they would grow weary. That he delays his coming. He delays his coming. Thanks to God, he's right on time. Amen. Amen. He's not eternal. We're the ones that get in a hurry. He's not in a hurry. That's right. Mm -hmm. I, I, as we look at this here, we, oh, let's talk about David for just a minute. Now, David got a lot of his training out in the woods. Right. Mm -hmm. David would be out with the sheep, and David would begin to recognize his position in Christ. Yeah. He realized, hey, I'm just one. I'm the shepherd here, but I, I I'm just a lamb. I don't know what to do. I need somebody to lead me. I need somebody to show me where the green pastures is. Yeah. I need somebody to lead me to the water. Hey, yeah. Thanks to God, we're lambs. All right. Lambs can't do it themselves. Yeah. In fact, a lamb is a very dumb animal. I'm not calling you dumb, amen? But when it comes to spiritual things, we are dumb. Oh, we need right. God to show us yeah. the way. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. We need God to open yeah. His Word. Yeah. But we must wait on God and not try to do it ourselves. Come on now. We must wait on God and not try to do it ourselves. So David would learn this. David would be out there and he'd watch the sheep and he'd watch them go. And he would learn, man, you, you just can't take, you, you've got to stay constant with them. Glory. David, verse 5, or 2 Samuel chapter 5, verse 17. And he says, but when the Philistines heard that they had anointed David king over the, the Israel, all the Philistine came up to seek David. And David heard of it and went down to the hole. So when you receive the Holy Ghost, you can guarantee you're going to have a battle. That's right. It said all the Philistines. So when you, listen, it's actually a good sign you got the Holy Ghost. Come on, Hey, glory. Why? Because all hell is coming against you. Yes. When that anointing comes, listen, the day of Pentecost. Brother Brandon said, he said, that the, the devil never even got out of bed. That's what he said. He said, the devil never even got out of bed on the day of Pentecost. But when Peter walked through the great beautiful, the, the, the gate beautiful, and said, such as I have, give I you, he said, all hell broke loose. That's right. He said, all hell broke loose. They were dead, dead from there. Where was he at? He was in jail the next day. He was pushed. Come on. What is it? It's the manifestation of the sons and daughters of God yeah. coming into action. Yeah. The devil hates this anointing, yeah. but he knows he cannot beat this anointing. Yeah. He couldn't beat it in Christ. Yeah. He couldn't beat it in Peter. Yeah. He couldn't beat it in Paul. Yeah. He couldn't beat it in any one of them. Right. He thought he did. He thought he had won. And he was yet, he did not win. Amen. He just spread it all over the That's place. Right. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Verse, verse 18. So, when you receive the Holy Ghost, when that anointing is upon you, you can guarantee there's something coming against you. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. Verse 18. The Philistines also came up and spread themselves in the valley of Rephaim. You know what Rephaim means? Giants. That's what it means, giants. How many's ever been in the valley of giants? Well, glory. How many? Come on now. How many's been on this Christian world for a while? Amen. Somebody been in the valley? Amen. You might be in the valley right now. Right. And you might have some giants looking Amen. down at you. Amen. How about some giants of pride? Well, yeah. glory. Yeah. Giants of jealousy. Yeah. Well, yeah. giants of doubt. Yeah. Right. Come on. Yeah. But I'll tell you this right now. If God brought you into that valley, it's for you to kill that giant. Amen. It's for you to overcome yeah. that giant. Amen. Yeah. Caleb left some giants in the land for you and I to kill. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Thanks to God, you're giant killers. You say, but man, I, I don't know. Well, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, you are a giant killer. If you have the anointing upon you and he's brought you into a valley, I don't care how you feel and what the valley looks like and how big they look, 
get to looking at the Word of God. That's what happened to the children of Israel. They listened to the report of somebody else. But I say to you, listen to the report of the Word of God. And this land is yours. The Holy Ghost is yours. Whatever is set before you, God didn't tell you to go back. He told you to go forward. So He put it before you. He'll split the Red Sea. He'll slay the child. He will fight your battles. But stay in your position and wait patiently on Him. That's the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Thanks to God. So many times we get, we get ahead of God. We're ahead of God. And it, it, it's not, listen, this, that's not a bad, listen. The reason you do it is because you want us, you want God's will. Amen. A lot of, uh, 90% of the time is you do, you're true hearted. You're real. You want God to do it. You, you want to be in God's perfect will. And you know, God, I'm supposed to do this. You are supposed to do that. But you must make sure he's with you when you're doing it. Right. Yes, sir. Yeah. Oh, brother Matt, he's with me. He's with me all the time. Joseph and Mary thought the same thing. Mm -hmm. No way. Right. They were two right. days journey and said, oh my, yeah. where's he at? Yeah. Could you imagine? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Doug Stevens, I'll tell him. Just a minute. <laughs> Doug Stevens went over there and preached for him. We got to their house. It was about 20 minutes away. Brother Mike's, we were eating dinner. We sat down eating dinner. We got to say pray. And somebody goes, where's Abigail? He looks at his wife, his wife at him, they look at Sister Joyce, Sister Joyce like, I don't get her. They left her church. 20 minutes away. You want to see petrified. I mean, you look to her, poof, they go. I imagine Doug, you know, of course, kept the speed limit the whole way there. Um, <clears throat> but I thought, you know, think about Mary and Joseph. Two days walking. Granted, he was 12, not four or three. She was sleeping. She was laying at the front door asleep. Oh, my God. Lord took care of me. I'll be honest with you. Don't tell him I told you that. <laughs> but just paint the picture. So many times we think God is with us. Right. And we take it for granted, but we've never really talked to him about it. We've never waited patiently. Say, Lord, you're with me today. Lord, I need you today. Lord, let me hear your word today. Encourage me today to follow. Yes, sir. Listen, he'll speak to you if you take time to. He comes yeah. where he's invited. Amen. Listen, invite him in your car on your drive to work. Yes, that's right. Yes. Come on, now nobody else is there. Why don't you invite him? Yes. Amen. Yes. That's right. Yes. That's all right, brother. Preach. Yeah. Yes, sir. Won't you invite him? To, brother Matt, you talk to me there? Absolutely. Yeah. Right. He comes where he's invited. Yes, sir. Think Amen. about those two on the way to the mess. He would have walked on a little further, but they said, no, Lord, I'm going to constrain you. Come on yeah. in. Lord, I, listen, you yeah. turn your car on. Push button. <laughs> Push button. <laughs> but say, Lord, I, I'd like to talk to you this morning. Lord, there's some things in my heart, Lord. I just, I don't know what to do about it. I, I like, Lord, you'd help me. Lord, there's this guy at work. He's driving me nuts. Lord, I got a bad attitude toward him. It's not the right attitude. Come on now. Come on, we speak, that, speak down home. Come on now. Amen. We speak down home. I work too. I know what you're talking about. Lord, let me have the right attitude. Today. Lord, maybe that person is the one that needs Christ. And there's a spirit upon them that's trying to come against me because they know I have it. Come on. Listen, those demons recognize Christ. That's right. That's right. That's right. Amen. So what is it? Is it spiritual warfare? Yeah. And do you think it's just, I don't like him? Come on now. That might be the very one that God put in your path to witness to. Right. All right. Amen. Bless him, Lord. Preach. Right. Preach. I don't want to do that, Lord. He's mean. Preach, brother. But there's a soul on the inside yes. that needs God the yes. same yes. as you do. Preach, brother. Amen. There's a soul on the inside, preach. and we're called to preach, preach. the gospel. That's right. We're called preach. to be a witness. That's Amen. Right. Yes. And how you react to them will be a witness. Yes. Well, praise, right. the That's That's right. <laughs> praise, praise the Lord. That's free. Praise the Lord. You love him. Yes. Amen. Amen. And the Philistines, verse, eight, verse 19. So here he comes, Philistines, he's coming, and he's in the valley of giants. He's in the valley of giants. And so David had learned, because he walked so sheep, Lord, I need your direction. This is David, freshly anointed king. Killed a bear, killed a lion, already killed a giant. Has a song named after him of, of the ten thousands he's killed. Mm -hmm. But David always knew his position right. to the word. Mm -hmm. And he waited on the word of the Lord. Mm -hmm. right. God will speak. Listen, this Bible will speak volumes to you. Amen. Yes. This message yes. will speak direct to you. I'll give you an yes. example. 
Yeah. Here recently I was uh, studying for a message. And feeling trying to come upon me. Just all the time, you've done something wrong. You've done something wrong. How many ever feel that way? Like you've done something wrong. Yeah. How many ever felt like you want to start all over again? Amen. Like I want to go get, I'm to fill the water. Let's get baptized again. Let's start over. Ever felt like I messed something up so long? No, you haven't. Just get discouraged. And you are patiently waiting on the Lord. So anyway, Thank you. so I'm listening. I have a brother. Brother Brian Crow is a friend of mine. He sent me a message. And it was actually Brother Samuel Browning preaching. And so I'm listening to Brother Samuel Brown, and he gets about 15 minutes in, and he mentions a story of Brother Branham that Brother Branham told, and it's about, I can't remember what the name of the message, but the way it goes, it was Sarah and Abraham, and they're in the tent on the morning, Elohim's coming down the road, and Sarah and him getting a little tiff. I thought, what? And it sparked my interest. And so I turned Brother Samuel off, and I went to the message. And so I'm reading through the message, and it just makes it so real. He knows where we live. Yeah. He said he got in a tip that morning. He said, you know what that was? He said that was the devil trying to block the visitation of Elohim. Mm. Mm. He says, yeah, he'll do it to you sometimes. He said, I'm paraphrasing now. Don't quote me, but it, it, it's in there. I'll get it for you if you want it. I'll send you the whole message. Amen. But he said, he said, you know, the devil does that to you sometimes. He tries to make you feel like you've done something wrong. You want to talk about something real. It broke that bondage. Amen. It broke it right off of me. Hallelujah. Saints of God. At that time, yes. that was God. Now, what's the likelihood? Brother in Tennessee sends me a message of Brother Samuel Browning preaching. Mm -hmm. Brother Samuel Brown is preaching, and he's, he tells says what Brother Random is preaching. Mm -hmm. And at this moment, I'm sitting in my recliner trying to get broke free from this thing. Mm -hmm. And God directs me, but I had to follow every step. If a brother yeah. sent me something, this brother was led. Well, yeah. you don't, I mean, you know, a lot of times we think, oh, that's just another thing. But no, the brother was led to send me that. And he sent it to me, and I listened to it. And then from there, I'm like, wait a minute. i got to go over here. Right. And when I, when I got here, God said, here. Amen. Amen. Broke yes. it from me just like that. Yes, yes. That's the God we serve. Amen. Amen. Something I prayed about, prayed about, searched my life. Look, Lord, I cannot find anything. Brother Adam, be certain of God. One of my most favorite messages. You ever, you ever get in that place where you felt like you've done something wrong? Listen Amen. to be certain of God. One of the most favorite messages I've ever listened to. One of the most encouraging messages. He said, I've been there many times myself. That's what he said. Amen. Search your life, search your life, nothing. Search your life, search your life, for nothing. He goes, then be certain of God. Yes. Praise the Lord. Yes. I don't know. We'll praise the Lord. Verse 19. So yes, Lord. David had learned. Even though David was a mighty conqueror. Even though he had songs already named about him. David did not get a big head. Just because you've had victories. Stay in the perfect will of God. Amen. Yes, sir. Yes. And David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I go to the Philistines? Wilt thou deliver thee thine into my hand? And the Lord said unto David, Go up, for I will doubtless deliver the Philistines into thy hand. And David came to bel -Perizim. You know what bel means? <laughs> Breakthrough. <laughs> you might have went to the Valley of Giants, but you're going to have a breakthrough. It means the breaking of water. He said, The Lord hath broke forth on my enemies. Amen. I want a breakthrough, Lord yeah, Jesus. Then yeah. inquire of the Lord. Now it doesn't say David immediately hit. Read your scriptures. It doesn't say immediately God spoke. He might have waited two days. That's right. Come on. He waited though until he got the answer. Yeah. But when he got the answer, he didn't wait any longer. He went forward in action. Yeah. And God gave him a breakthrough. Yes. Yes. Amen. Amen. Right, right, brother. David spoke them there and said, The Lord hath broken forth upon my enemies. Before me as the breach of waters. Therefore he called the name of the place. Bel Perizim. And there they left their images. And David and his men burnt them. And the Philistines came up yet again. Man the devil never burns does he? And he's not going to give up. He's coming again. Yes sir. Yeah. Listen now. And they spread themselves in the valley of Rephaim. The same place. So think about this. David just won a battle the day before. Smote them, burnt their stuff, probably did a victory dance. Maybe did a little shout. Well, glory. I believe in some shouting in church. I believe in some victory dances in church. You get enough victory, you can't hold your feet still. Right. 
Come on now. I'm not talking about made up. I'm not talking about get out of my way. I got to go dance. No, I'm talking about the Holy Ghost moves upon you and it sets your feet to dancing. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. One time I was listening to Brother Andrew Glover. He was preaching. He got done preaching. I came up behind him. I was singing. And I said, Lord, I just feel like dancing. And God said, go. And away I went. I danced all over the front of that church. I don't care what they thought of me. I was praising my Lord Jesus. Yes. Listen, we need that kind of victory in this hour. And we can have that kind of victory. Yes. Amen. Let me ask you, are you praying? Preach, Lord. Bless the Holy Ghost. Come on. You want that victory? Begin to ask for that victory. Yeah, right. And then begin to expect that victory. Yeah. And then wait patiently until that victory is there. You're not going to make it up, but you'll step into that victory. And when you step into that victory, yeah. you want to listen? Come on now. You think Mary was like, oh, look, there's the dead Philistine that used to beat me, or dead, dead Egyptian that used to beat me. No, she was happy. Amen. Hey man, she knew that guy wasn't getting up anymore. Yes. Oh, Hallelujah. Amen. Right. Mm -hmm. My God. Yes, sir. Amen. It says the Philistines came up yet again and spread themselves in the valley of And when David, what did David do again? He inquired of the Lord. Amen. The devil does not want you to pray. Can I tell you that? Because when the weakest sinner prays, mm -hmm. weakest Christian prays, that's right, but weakest Christian prays, mm -hmm. he trembles. Mm -hmm. So what about ones that are strong? All right. Mm -hmm. wow. mm -hmm. What about ones that are praying every day? What about ones that are praying, are praying without ceasing? Listen, some of you sisters, Listen, when a body gets together, some of you sisters can pray and touch heaven. Pray. Right. Touch heaven. Yes. If you're praying and you remember me, please pray for me. Amen. Amen. Right. I believe God can put your yes. people to your mind. Yes. You may yes. never know why. I know I say this a lot, yes. but I always want to encourage any group of believers to be in prayer. Amen. Right. Yes. Amen. That's right. But then we'll talk about it. He talked about hamstringing. He talked about the deer. He said, the deer, he said, if they get him to quit praying. Quit having prayer meetings. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Amen. You love him. Amen. Amen. Where are we at? Verse 22. And the Philistines, in verse 23. And when David inquired of the Lord, he said, Thou shalt not go up. Here's David. I mean, as a human. You're thinking, Lord, it's the same people. I whooped them yesterday. Can I whoop them again? But David realized he always needed the Lord to go before him. Amen. That's right. The Bible says David also kept the Lord before him always. Let me hurry now. And the Philistines came again, 23. Thou shalt not go up, but fet, fetch the compass of behind them and come upon over against the mulberry trees. And let it be there when thou hearest the sound of the going of the tops of the mulberry trees, that thou... Then, that then thou shalt bestir thyself, for then shall the Lord go out before thee to smite the host of the Philistines. And David did so, and the Lord had commanded him, and smote the Philistines from Geba and the come of Gershon. Brother Ram said this, David was going to battle. He didn't go frustrated. He didn't go frustrated. Man, man, I had to preach right there, brother Lord. I had to preach. A lot of times we get frustrated. He didn't go with a halfway mark. He didn't go thinking maybe it'll do it. But he waited in the mulberry bush until after a while it was death silent. You might be in a place right now where it's death silent and you think you need to do something. What you need to do is continue to wait patiently on the Lord Jesus. Continually wait patiently on God to move. Because when God moves, He moves before you and the battle is already in array before you even get there. After a while, a great gusher of wind went out before him. He knew that God was the holy host of angels going before him. He drew his sword and took the battle and set the enemy to flight. Right. Hallelujah! Amen. Brother Ma'am, I think you tell you, he said it was the angel of the Lord going before them as he hit the top of those mulberry bushes. 
Can you imagine? Listen, saints of God, you don't, oh, brother Matt, that, that, that ain't going to happen. Listen, you, how many feel the presence of God? Yeah. How many has been in a situation where the presence of God came on you? Yeah. You waited, you asked the Lord for direction, yeah. and all of a sudden the presence of God came on you, and you knew, now I go. Amen. Amen. I'm reminded of Saul. I remember Saul. He waited seven days. I waited seven days. That's long enough. The Bible says as soon as, you know, you know the other story. They were right there. He said all the people, he come under the influence of everybody around him. Everybody around him said, Saul, you got to do something. You're the king. Saul, what are you going to do? Uh, we need to go to battle. Well, everybody's leaving. They're, they're, they're scattered. Saul, what are we going to do? Saul, 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 Saul. Every voice. Don't come under the influence of any other voice but the voice of God. Yeah. 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 That's right. Saul. So, as soon, listen, the Bible says, as soon as he got done off, he goes, all right, bring the land. I'll, I'll, I'll humble myself and I'll do this work, I guess. He does it. And as soon as he gets done, there's Samuel. Can you imagine Samuel's face? Can you imagine that prophet looking right through him? He says it like this. What hast thou Done. Amen. Amen. Right. Brother Ram would pick this up in the church's book. He would say, that's a trick of the devil. <laughs> Let me get to this, man. I, I got I this he says, Satan, listen, he says, Satan knew the plan of God, so he put it in the hearts of the people to go ahead of God. Right. So Satan knows the plan of God. He doesn't maybe know all the timing of that, but he knows when God's moving. Amen. How many knows that he knows when God gets? When you get the yeah. biggest fight you've ever had, yeah. what is it? Satan trying to mock a visitation oh, of Elohim. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. You might be in the biggest fight you've had this week. Yeah. You might be fighting right now, but it's nothing more than Satan yeah. trying to yeah. block a visitation yeah. of Elohim. Yeah. And when he sat down with Elohim, what did he do? He began to talk it over. And he didn't have to have any more doubts any longer. He knew the very plan of God. Yes, yes, sir. Hallelujah. Let me read you a few quotes here and then we'll close. Hallelujah. Could you imagine Samuel's face, though? Could you imagine Saul's face? Uh oh. Hallelujah. Brother mm. Raymond said this. He said, oh, I do not wish for anybody to be in a hurry. Always be just as quiet, just calm, and cool. You know what I say? Lord, help me. Help me. Yes, I'm an emotional person, if you don't know. I'm high strung. I am who I am. I've asked the Lord so many times, Lord, why couldn't I be more like that guy? Bless him, Lord. Brother Bram sat down in front of a, uh, uh, a tree. Was so upset he couldn't hit the dead center of the squirrel's eye. His gun was off or something. And he sit there and cried and said, God, why'd you make me that way? He said, I made you that way for a purpose. Mm -hmm. Each one of you are made for a purpose. Amen. You can't be somebody else. You've got to be you. Amen. Now, we also can control our emotions by the Holy Ghost. Right. Amen. You pray for me. Listen, this is another quote. God is in no hurry. We're the ones that are in a hurry. Right. Not God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I never want to get in a hurry about anything. You know, that's the trouble with us today. We're in too much of a hurry. Brother Ram said he's late to his wedding. Imagine his wife was happy. <laughs> Say he wouldn't be late to his funeral too. <laughs> he says, we're the ones that always gets in a hurry. God's never in a hurry. He just says it and it's going to be. But when he says anything, it's got to be. It's going to be. He just lets it Take its time. Yes. Yes. Remember, we're not just time beings. We've dropped down into time. But we came from eternity. Right. Yes. Yes. But in this time, let's start. I know there's things you've got to do. You've got to get to work on time. I'm not saying be late. I'm not saying that. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to your spiritual life, mm -hmm. you must know it's God moving you. Sometimes, it how many loves it when God's just like, boom, right there? You ask, boom, right there. It's like, well, why can't it just be that way all the time? Oh, my. But no, that's not how it works. 
because we have to have the fruit of patience. Amen. And sometimes yes. patience yeah. and God's word to be true. They said, our God is able to deliver us from the fiery furnace. Nevertheless, we won't bow to the image because it's against, uh, it's against the word. See, although he slays us, he will rise. He will raise us. You see, he let them walk right up to the great furnace and drop into it before it seemed like he even paid any attention. Like he wasn't even watching them. How many has ever felt that way? How many has ever felt, Lord, really? I thought you were supposed to come for me. <laughs> well, come on now. But he's always watching. Yes. He's always watching for this. The brother him said this. I'll read you a couple more and we're done. Now that's one of the greatest ruins of our American heritage today. And we're trying to run over the top of everybody. Like we're trying to run over the top of God, not waiting. They that wait upon the Lord, he shall renew their strength. Amen. Brother Brandon would always come to the end of the service. What would he do? He'd pause. Sing a song. Talk for a minute. Like, I'm just waiting on him. I'm just waiting on him. Right. Then he'd come and he'd move right in. Amen. But he knew he couldn't do anything without him. The same as Jesus knew. Right. I could do nothing except the Father show me. But we ask the Father and then we never will wait on him to show us. Come on now. Right. Listen. Yeah. Elijah. Musicians come. Elijah. He came. He ran from Jezebel. Here he was, up there in the cave, hidden away. And he instilled himself before the Lord. And he was listening for one thing. Amen. Fire come. It didn't move him. That's right. The wind come. It didn't move him. It's about time we stop getting moved by everything that goes on around us. All right. That's but we've quieted everything. How many's ever heard somebody talk in a crowd and they say something kind of kind of soft? What do you do? Shh. Did you hear that? Why? Because now you're wanting to hear it. Or you hear a noise. How many ever heard a mouse? Shh. Did you guys hear that? There's, a, there's something here. Something's here. Did you hear that? Shh. Shh. But what about us spiritually? Lord, I've asked for an answer. I'm waiting. Lord, I've tuned out every other voice that's contrary to my prayer request. And I'm asking for you, even if it's That's right. praise the Lord. Yes. Brother Ben would say, he would talk about being stand still long enough that he could tell her about Isaac. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You love him. Amen. I'm reminded of one more. Abraham. 25 years. He waited. The Bible says he did not grow weak in his faith, but he grew stronger. Let me ask you, are you going stronger? You say, Brother Matt, I, I, I really haven't been. Well, just repent of that. Say, Lord, I'm sorry. Lord, I'm waiting patiently for you. Lord, this patience that Brother Matt's talking about, this waiting for you. Lord, let me be so still with myself that I'd be so sensitive to the Holy Ghost. When the Holy Ghost speaks, I just say, yay, Lord. Yes, Lord. That's the answer I wanted to hear. Amen. Brother Matt said this, says, we be strong. He said, we can't wait five minutes. Abraham waited on him 25 years. Getting stronger all the time. We begin to weaken the first minute. Time to get out of the platform. This is not a spontaneous hearing. And you may say, oh, I don't guess. Maybe I'll have to go back when Brother Roberts comes. Maybe Brother Random, I'd give me a, another prayer card. I'll go through Abraham's children. When God's word has come to be made true and real to your heart, anything contrary, any time, is a lie. God told the truth. I'm reminded of one more story as we close. John Ryan. How many remembers the story of John Ryan? Brother Bram said he came to the prayer line, I think it's three or four times. Came the first time. You got faith? Yeah. Pray for him. He was blind, walking to the prayer line. Came up there and says, You have faith to be healed. You have faith to receive your sight. He said, Yeah, I've got faith. He prayed over it. Next thing you know, here comes John Ryan to the prayer line again. I, uh, I still can't see. He goes, I thought you said you had faith. I think he came three times through that same prayer line. Finally, he said, start changing your confession. I can see you. Amen. I can see you. Amen. I can see you. Thank you, Lord, for my healing. Yes. Thank you, Lord, for my healing. Yes. Lord, I look to your word. Your word says I'm healed. Father, there's no manifestation of it. But Father, I look to your word. Father, you said the Holy Ghost was for me. Yes. Hallelujah. Listen, this goes multiple ways. Father, you said salvation was for me. 
Father, you said deliverance. Lord, you said a sound mind was for me. Hallelujah. Lord, you didn't put me in here to be under doubt. Lord, you didn't put me here to be under condemnation. Amen. Father, I need you. John Ryan there, he's going around. The, I don't know how long it was. A couple weeks, I think he was walking around. I'm healed. Passing papers, I think is what he did. I think it was paper, soul papers or something like that. Or pencils or something. I can hear you. I can see. They said the next night he interrupted service three or four times. I can see. Blind is all get out. But he was speaking to faith. He was speaking to faith. I can't. I, listen, if a prophet can see a vision, I pray when we get to the other side, there's things that I can see. Right. I want to see John Ryan receive his eyesight. He was sitting in a barber's chair, half his face maybe shaved, and all of a sudden he said, so John, and I'm sure the barber maybe got his hand in front of him going, so you can see, John? Huh? You can see? I can see. And about that time he goes, I can see. Yeah. And he took off running. He let his confession yes. match the word of God. And he waited patiently. God met him in a barber chair. Yes, sir. Yes. Yes. Amen. That's the word. Amen. That's the word. I remember running into two women one time. They came through a prayer line. The voice of the Lord told them they were healed. They went home. Neither one of them had healing. They lived on the same street, I believe, or close to one another. There one morning, one of them had a quarter. Something else. Another one had another growth. The angel of the Lord came down there all the way. Healed one, healed the other. Yes. And I believe they met. Yes, sir. What were they doing? Just confessing the word of God. Yes. Listen, don't make it so hard. You said, what happened to these physical symptoms? Yes. Job had them too. Amen. He called them lying vanities. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. They're sitting in a fairy tale. Thank you. It's reality. Yes. Yes. You love it today. Amen. Let's pray together. It's been a pleasure to speak to you. We love you. Keep pressing on, Saints. It's been a pleasure to be with you today. I sure appreciate the Lord having us. We love you. Let's pray one for another. Let's pray. You pray for me, Lord. Help me to have more patience. And then I know this isn't a you know, fire message, but it's reality. It's reality. Amen? It's reality. Let's pray together. Kind of gracious Heavenly Father. Lord, there's been many, many times, Father, we've prayed over things, Father, and just. In our humanity, Lord, we begin to doubt, Lord, because it doesn't happen right away. But, Father, we repent for that just now. Father, I pray right now, Lord, for every one of those prayer requests. Lord, you heard it. Lord, the answer's on the way. Father, there's been many loved ones we prayed for, Lord. Many lost souls. Many healings, Father, we're looking for, Father. God, we're waiting patiently for the manifestation, Lord God, of your word to come to fruition in our lives, Father. God, I pray for this church right now, God, that you touch each life just now, Father. God, may you quicken them, Lord, refill them, Lord, encourage their hearts just now. God, for every doubt, Lord, that Satan would try to put there, Father, God, may you tear it out just now, Lord, and let them know you're on the scene, Father. God, I pray, let the Holy Ghost in power move in every vessel just now. God, the Lord, bless him, strengthen him, Father. Touch his knee, Lord God, for your glory. Lord, I pray, bless each one, Lord, we give you glory. We give you honor in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray.
them favor. Yes. We're going to see one of them, then we'll let you go. Amen. Amen. I don't know about you, but I'm glad I can stand and say today that I'm glad I'm one of them. Yes. Yes. I'm thankful today for the Word of God. How many thankful for the Word of God? Amen. How many needs more patience? Yes. I know you're afraid to raise your hand. Amen. <laughs> Amen. That was good for us. Yes. It's good. Yes. It's good, Lord. But understand, reality, sometimes it, 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 we try to push it aside. Lord, I don't want to. I'm not like that, but we are. Amen. Even Amen. the prophet got out, I'm listening, and he says, you know, I went through this, and, and, and I failed this test. He said, i got to go back and take it again. Put it in my words. Yes. Sometimes, how many has ever failed a test besides for the Lord? Amen. And as soon as it happened, he said, I know I've got to go through this. Yes, amen. But I'm so glad I can stand to say, yes. today and say, I'm glad I'm one of them. Yes. Amen. Let's sing it and we go in just yes. a few moments. Thank you. It is on. It's well, let me get another mic. Uh, I'm one of them. I'm one of them. God bless you. We love you. Love you. What a mighty God is. 